This program is brought to you by the Kuchichang Area Prevention and Education Coalition. CAPE exists to reduce youth and young adult alcohol and other drug use by promoting safe and healthy choices among all community members. We're going to start. We're going to call the meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. Roll call. Mike Holden. Here. Tony Corby. Here. Ted Saxton. Here. Roxanne Skokstead Deach. Here. Michelle Hebner. Here. Jennifer Windows. Here. Terry Murray. Here. Kevin Grover. Here. Ella Barr Jeffries. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, let's see. I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. I got a motion by Michelle and a second by Tony. Any further discussion? I do have some uh, discussion here really quick. I just wanted to thank everybody for attending tonight's meeting. Um, there appears to be some new faces here, so I want to clarify some things really quick. Um, there are many laws that govern how the school board conducts business, and as the board chair, I take this responsibility seriously, and so do other board members. First, the agenda is made by the superintendent and the board chair. An item on the consent agenda is put on that section because it will assume, we assume that everybody will vote yes, and is just regular business. Second, the action item section is the, is, oh, I'm sorry, if I didn't say consent agenda on the last one, that's what I meant. Yeah. Second, the action item section is for items that are up for discussion. School board members are encouraged not to make up their mind until after the discussion has finished. An action item being listed in this section does not mean the board has decided on it. Third, the school board does not, and school board members do not conduct business, especially on a pending action item on Facebook. Our phone numbers and email addresses are listed on the school's website. Next, this is not a meeting for the public. It is the school board meeting that is open to the public. There's a difference. The open forum is not mandated by the state and who speaks is at the discretion of the board chair. If you filled out an open forum request, the rules on the sign-up sheet will be observed, including a five minute time limit. Speaking at the open forum is a privilege and not a right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, I'll call it to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Um, open forum, number one, presentation of Elks March Student of the Month, Joe Glowett. Joe Blowack is the Elks March Male Student of the Month. Joe is an exceptional student in our school and community. He has been taking honors classes throughout his high school career and has been on the principal's list for A honor roll. Joe is a member of the Minnesota Honor Society. Outside of school, he has volunteered at our local VFW, Elks Club, preschool, and a variety of other activities in the community. Joe was recently awarded the Todd Lepper Award in hockey this year. This award exemplifies someone who stands out in the ice, in the classroom, and in the community. On top of his academic accomplishments, Joe is a member of our cross country, hockey, and baseball teams. During the summer, he works for the International Falls Recreation Commission. Next year, Joe plans to attend the University of Wisconsin River Falls to pursue a degree in engineering. Joe Glowack, the Elks March Male Student of the Month. Slatinski is the Elks April Female Student of the Month. Georgie is dedicated to her studies and always works extremely hard in the classroom. She has been on the A honor roll throughout her high school career. Georgie is a member of the FHS Student Council and Minnesota National Honor Society. Outside of the classroom, she has been actively involved with the Spirit of the Borderland Youth Group, Football Manager, Bass Fishing Team, and Ojibwe Quiz Bowl Team. 
When not at school, Georgie works at the Good Samaritan Society, Sandy Point Lodge, and teaches swimming lessons. Additionally, she has volunteered at First Lutheran Church, the local food shelf, the Minnesota Middle School Pep Fest, and the Kutaska Block Party. Georgie will be attending the University of Minnesota Morris to major in elementary education and minor in Native Studies. While, he, while at the University of Minnesota Morris, she is also studying, planning to study abroad with the National Student Exchange Program. Georgie Ann Slatinsky, the Elks April Female Student of the Month. Garrett Koenig is the Elks April Male Student of the Month. Garrett is a conscientious, dedicated, and hardworking student athlete in our school that works well through adversity and always strives to succeed. As a student, he has shown dedication to his studies as he has been on the A honor roll throughout his high school career. Garrett is also a leader outside of the classroom. He has been a three-sport athlete throughout his entire high school career playing football, basketball, and baseball. Garrett is also a member of the FHS Student Council. He enjoys giving back to his community as he volunteers at our Elks Club, VFW, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, and as a youth coach and official. He currently works at Cine 5 and Evil's Houseboats. This summer, Garrett will be working at Voyagers National Park to gain new experience to use towards his career goals. Garrett will be attending Central Lakes College in Brainerd to pursue a degree in natural resources and play football this fall. Garrett Koenig, the Elks April Male Student of the Month. Open for Open forum item number three, presentation of MHS of Teachers of the Month. Uh, once again, for this month, we have two, um, two more teachers that have done the duties of teaching students, and they do an excellent job at it. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Ringhofer is unable to make it, so he was the high school teacher of the month. He's been teaching with us for 25 years and is in the math department. So he won the teacher of the month for the high school. And for the elementary, I am proud to award Mrs. Jill Catron, the elementary teacher of the month. Uh, she, students have said she's very passionate and loves her kids. So this is Mrs. Catron, the elementary This contract is the largest part of my business, so I take this very serious. This is the fifth time in nine years that I have stood before this board fighting for this contract. I feel I have not been heard or taken seriously. This is not only insulting to myself, but also to my business and my ability to do this job. Am I wasting my time putting a bid in year after year because clearly everything I do is never enough? I know I can do this job better than any of the other three companies, Enstrom's, LifeTouch, and Interstate, that I have competed against in the last nine years of owning this business. Enstrom's and LifeTouch only had it for one year, and Interstate just had it for a two-year term. The last time I had the contract was for five straight years, from 2012 to 2017. I feel I've done everything I possibly could to get this contract. I lowered my prices to the lowest they've ever been, lower than they were in 2012. With the consideration of inflation, this is a huge financial burden to myself and my family. I am a local business. I am very capable of doing this job and doing it better than any other company. I donate to every sport team and other school events every year. I continuously give discounts to this school. I am involved in the PIE committee and the ECFE committee. My time and money are donated all year long to this district. 
When these large companies do not receive this bid, they are not here fighting for it every year like I am. These companies take thousands of dollars out of this community and do not give back to the kids. I do. I know I have the support of the faculty and the community. It would be nice to know that I have the support from the school that I support every year. I can understand the need for this bid if there were multiple local photographers competing for the job, but there hasn't been another local bid since 2010. Why can't we just sit down and come to an agreement on everything and not revisit this every year unless there are issues that need to be resolved? Or, why can't this be a community or a parent vote? The school district does not pay the photographer to take these photos. The parents do. The choice should be theirs. The last two years when Interstate had the contract, I had hundreds of families still come to my business to get their school pictures taken. I feel the only thing that was and has always been taken into consideration is the dollar amount. Money is not everything. Is a few dollars on package prices really that big of a deal if the quality of the photo is not worth handing out to anyone? Simply put, that's money wasted and pictures thrown away. I have had a ton of families over the years tell me they would rather pay a few extra dollars to get a great photo than pay a cheaper price and have to pay us to have their photo taken a second time. You aren't saving the members of the school district money by always choosing the lowest bidder. Everyone knows that school pictures are taken in September, just like they know school clothes, school supplies, and other things need to be purchased for when school starts. Pictures are just one more thing parents need to plan for. Just because the photos are taken in September does not mean that they have to be paid for the day they are taken. If a child does not have an envelope or money on picture day, we still take their photo. We would never tell them they can't order. We keep the photos forever and anyone can order pictures at any time. We have had multiple families contact us and say, we need an extra payday to be able to purchase the photos, and that's just fine. We are just a phone call away. Call us and you will speak with Lacey or myself. You will not be getting, excuse me, you will not be calling a big corporation. You will speak to the person who took your envelope and your photos. And we will more than likely know exactly who your child is. You don't get this type of service from these large companies. These children are not just numbers in our computers. We know these kids and we are easy to work with. Being local makes it super easy for the teachers, secretaries, and parents to contact us to fix a mistake. It should not be the teachers or secretaries' jobs to have to take time out of their day to fix the photographer's mistakes. This is something we heard happened over and over again from many parents and faculty members the years that we did not take the photos. It absolutely blows my mind that these million dollar companies with thousands of employees can mess this whole school picture process up year after year and still get awarded the contract. There are multiple kids who have still not received their class photo from two years ago. Come on, that would never happen with us. Lacey and I are just two moms doing a job that we love and we can do it with little to no problems, mistakes, complaints, or retakes. I'm gonna have to interrupt you. We're at the five minute mark. Please finish uh, quickly. Lacey and I are just two moms doing a job that we love and we can do it. Okay, sorry, I just said that. We understand their prices are always going to be lower and they may be able to take the photos faster. This is because they herd the kids in like cattle. They do not take time with them to make them picture ready. They take one photo whether they are ready or not and it shows in their final product. There is a lot more than time and money that goes into this whole process. I am confident that the products and photos that Lacey and I put out are the absolute best. There is no comparison in quality, nor can these companies compete with us on the relationship that we have with these kids, and that shows in our final product. When these other companies have taken the pictures, I can't begin to tell you how many times the kids come up to us and tell us how awful it was. Not to mention the parents that resourced us. Uh, sorry, that five minute, I was pretty uh, certain on that. How much more do you have left? A paragraph or two. All right, go ahead and finish. Not to mention the parents that reach out to us to have their pictures retaken because they are used to the quality of our work. I can't help but think that this is a personal issue. I know the last time I put a bid in, my prices were higher based on the quality of my work. This year, I lowered my prices drastically to compete with these million dollar companies who can obviously afford to have rock bottom prices. I did everything that was asked on the bid and to me, there's absolutely no reason I should not get this contract being so close in price. 
In closing, I'm sure you are all aware of the Facebook post I put out regarding the school board meeting on this bid. Please don't ignore all the comments and the huge amount of support that I have from this community backing me to get this contract. I simply care about these kids and their pictures, and I know Lacey and I are by far the absolute best choice for this job. Thank you. Next up for, to talk about school pictures is Ashley Walden. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Anthony. Uh, she might pretty much touched on everything, but the quality is way better. We know we had her pictures done both places. Had them redone with her. Uh, you guys should really be supporting her. She's on all your guys' wrestling, she's donating, everything else, hockey. Uh, she takes the time with the kids. Make sure they got the right photos. Make sure they look good. They're not just sit down and take your picture. I hope you guys have decided to take her pictures. If not, we still will be going back to her. We won't have to take it twice. That's all. Thank you. Lastly, about school pictures, Shelly Kane. I just want to take a few seconds to support our local businesses, whether it's Sage Lee or another local photographer. We need to stay local. We preach purchase local and support our local businesses. We have no problem going to them for donations, but then when it comes time to hire them, we go elsewhere. Where let's consider staying local. I've had my kids' pictures taken for 12 years, and Sage Lee does an awesome job. She takes the time, she takes, she's personal. I've watched this other company at the school I work with, and they don't take the time. They just get them in, take the picture. We've had, I've watched that they've had, I mean, pictures have come from my students back to us where they're not even looking at the camera, or they've got a goofy look on their face or whatever, so I know that Sage Lee takes the time. I just think we need to try to stay local if we can. I'm I'm more than happy to pay a couple extra bucks to get the quality that we can get from Sage Lee. Okay, now on to the consent agenda. Approve the consent agenda as presented. Number one, approve past meeting minutes for the regular school board meeting on March 18th, 2019. So moved. Oh, thanks. Oops, sorry. <laughs> well, we can remember that one. <laughs> approve current accounts payable due in the amount of $701,889.67. Approve payroll in the amount of $393,578.01. For the pay periods of March 29, 2019, and April 12, 2019. Second reading of school board policy 601, school district curriculum and goals, and instructional goals. Second reading of school board policy 603, curriculum development. Second reading of school board policy 604, instructional curriculum. Number seven, second reading of school board policy 613, graduation requirements. Second reading of school board policy 614, school district testing plan and procedure. Second reading of school board policy form 614, assurance of tests, security, and non-disclosure. Second reading of school board policy 615, testing accommodations, modifications. Second reading of school board policy 616, school district system accountability. Number 12, second reading of school board policy 618, assessment of student achievement. Second reading of school board policy 619, staff development for standards. Second reading of school board policy 802, disposition of obsolete equipment and material. 
At number 15, adopt revised fiscal year 2019-2020 calendar with additional in-service date and corrections to exchange date in November and Thanksgiving holiday for 2019. Acknowledge Jennifer Erickson as volunteer girls and boys track and field coach for the 2018-2019 season. Acknowledge Ashley Goff as volunteer softball coach for the 2018-2019 season. Approve hire of Shelby Nelson as head volleyball coach for the 2019-2020 season. Approve hire of Ashley Goff as head girls swimming coach for the 2019-2020 season. Approve hire of Ariana Cipriano as assistant girls swimming coach for the 2019-2020 season. Approve hire of Paul Jelly as head cross country coach for the 2019-2020 season. Approve hire of Cheryl Hendrickson as assistant cross country coach for the 2019-2020 season. Approve termination of Courtney, Courtney Olson, paraprofessional, effective April 10, 2019. Approve a request for three days of unpaid leave by Justin Carney, paraprofessional, for May 28th, May 30th, to, through May 30th, 2019. I'll entertain a motion. I'll have one. Can I get a second? Second. I've got a motion by Rox and a second by Ty, so um, Mike. Any further, or no, no further discussion? Any clarification? The, the only thing I was going to mention, I think I informed you about my mistake on the calendar, um, not knowing the date of when was and then corresponding for Thanksgiving. So I apologize for that. There's no material change. <laughs> OK. Uh, no more clarification. I'll call it to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Carries unanimously. Moving on to action items. Approve the following fiscal year 2019-2020 capital and long-term facilities project. Um, I don't need a motion before I just <laughs> Okay. Award roofing bid to range, cornice, and roofing for arena at cost not to exceed $59,699 and a pool cost not to exceed $122,062. Award library and elevator flooring bid to Studio B Flooring, previously known as Blonde Furniture, in the amount of $9,690. Approve the refurbishing of 255 lockers at FES with electrostatic painting and installation of plastic bottom inserts at a cost of $32,546. Approved purchase of 39 columns of athletic lockers for FHS Girls Locker Room at a cost of $9,050. Award phase two corridor ceiling project for FES to K&K Myers at, bid of, at a bid of $43,511. Award phase two corridor ceiling project for FHS to K and K Myers at bid at a bid of sixty three thousand two hundred eighty nine dollars. Award phase two corridor lighting project for FES to Cantor Electric at a bid of forty thousand eight hundred and forty seven dollars. Award phase two corridor lighting project for FHS to Cantor Electric at bid of $67,765. Approve replacement of outside lighting posts in the student and faculty parking lots at both FHS and FES by Cantor Electric for a cost of $16,000. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. I've got a motion by Jennifer and a Second by Tony. Any further discussion? If I can make a few comments. First of all, um, attached to kind of the motion there, if you're looking online, is the long-term facility plan for this year. And the reason I have that attached is we're at the time period where we have to start moving things around. Originally, you approved it in July or August, somewhere in that time frame. And as the year goes on, mainly the get bids and plan the projects for the upcoming summer. Um, 
fortunate or unfortunate, most of the time prices are a little higher, something's getting done, or maybe we had a major issue during the year, we have to pull something. It's trying to get that long-term facility and capital, which was approved budget, to balance out. So with that said, um, we pulled a $90,000 paving project because mainly um, the projects are getting in higher. The ceiling project, the roofing project, um, the values are up. And so we've taken that off. We've also shifted something to get the two lanes side by side. Um, keep in mind, long-term facility maintenance, only certain things can go in there. You know, it's, um, you can't buy furniture over Okay, you can repair things. And so it, it's a matter of doing the shelving if you want back and forth. So that said, I wanted you aware that, you know, things are changing. Um, hopefully, you know, we're at the point for the most part that we're ready to go for the summer, assuming these things, um, these things go forward. The second thing I wanted to touch base on is all of these items um, go through a similar process, whether you want to call them a bid process or request for a proposal. Um, some are at a value that we need to do that. Others are at a value that we don't need to do that. But I guess I believe, unless you want to construct it differently, that it is a fair process to open it up, whether it's local, whether it's out of town, out of state, for groups to bid, do a request for a proposal, to submit whatever you want to call it, and participate in the project. Part of that means a one meeting the criteria. Okay. If a company puts in a bid, it does not meet the requirement of being a license and adequate insurance or being able to do the scope of the project, obviously they get gained help. Otherwise, we take successful applicants, put them through a criteria, you know, make sure they meet the criteria, check references, you know, do what we can to analyze. I'll be honest, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a roofer. You, you know, you have to do reference checks. Uh, people, things like that, to make sure they are qualified. Um, from that point, we analyze and then submit to you a um, a recommendation. Okay, um, I guess majority of the time, assuming everyone is qualified and can meet the criteria, the main thing we look at is price. We are spending taxpayer dollars, and that is, I guess, what our feeling is that. Um, once everyone meets the criteria, we feel they're somewhat apples to apples, you look at price. If we want to do it differently, I guess what I'm asking is we need, I need, it's not just me, it could be Tom um, looking at things, it could be, you know, it's just like hiring. And, you know, it eventually comes to me, it doesn't mean I give all the recommendations. But if being local is, you know, what you want, we need to know if it's, it's what you want. You know, I'm not even so sure this is legal when it comes to taxpayer dollars by a certain percent, saying if they're within 10%, we're going to keep it local. Um, we need to have a conversation because, again, I don't want to put something in front of you um, that, you know, not doing what you want to do, so to speak. So I guess I'm laying it out there because as I um, check into, um, you know, typically when all criteria are met and it comes down to dollar value, that's what you better be um, looking at. It's hard to defend. If we don't take the lowest bid, we legally have to be able to defend why we're not selecting a car. Say we're buying a car. We get a, you know, three bids, three, you know, technically depend on value, we don't have to bid it, but we do request for quotes, get them, open them. If we decide not to go with the lowest, we need a defense, okay? Meaning they can meet all the specs. Um, you know, it wasn't 10 passengers, if that's what we're looking at, or, you know, they couldn't get the color if that was what we wanted. At least that's something to defend. To say we paid 2000 more because it was local is not a defendable reason, okay? And so I'm laying that out there as we go through. If you want it to be local, there is a way, and, and Sage actually talked about it in her, her deal. There's certain things we don't have to bid or go out for, and we can do that and, and pick two companies. Or three companies, um, if you want to do interviews as a process, okay, and, and whether it's this or anything else, we need to set that up ahead of time. It needs to be quote unquote fair to all people, and that came up earlier this month. So I, I'm just trying to uh, run through some things. Can we talk about that now? Well, uh, again, I just, I'm just laying a process. I mean, I'm, and I'm, I'm just throwing, and, and again, 
and we can't talk about any of it because a variety of questions have come up. And I guess I'm looking not just for myself, but for administration and the others that work through the process is if we want a different process, I guess we want to know and go that route. If we're okay, in, you know, trying to, um, yeah. So, um, is that something we talk about now? So, like I can tell you, I'd like to see the process change. I guess I'm open it's up to Ted. Yeah, so if we talk about the specific process and uh, in regards to this uh, motion, then yeah, I feel that's fine if you want to talk about the process and not any future motions or future action items on here at the time. So the process is very appropriate to talk about. Okay, well I like to talk about it because uh, if we just do the requirements uh, where outside of town uh, comes in here and they've won the bid um, and then they don't do the job up to, we don't know that they're not going to do the job and a lot of times they come in and don't do the job, okay, in a case like the photos and stuff and, and so it makes it hard for a school board member uh, to go that way. So I'd like to see conversation, I'd like to see a local because um, I think that's really important and I'd like to see some kind of more discussion from the other school board about uh, requirements and stuff. Because uh, a lot of times you go by low bid and then these people don't do the job up to what you want. So okay. or they don't or they don't get it done in a timely manner. Or they don't get it done. Period. That's that happened with the photo. So I get my ear bent about uh, Photos and stuff. Like keep it on. Keep it on. Like general, 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 but at least you know how I feel. I, I think our town needs local business, and, and if it's close, if the bids are close, and everybody is meeting the requirements, then I think we should discuss about doing it locally. That's my opinion. Right. This is America. This is my opinion. Okay, um, I would like to say that I'm open to either way of doing it, but I will be one that will want to stick to that. I remember about a year ago talking about if we're going to do um, low bid for one thing, then we need to do low bid for everything. So if if you know if people start coming in. Um, and, and start arguing points, um, we have to be consistent, is all I'm saying. Consistency is important or we're going to have a lot of problems. Yep, Terry. Sorry, right. Got their hand up. Sorry, I'm looking, at, looking at the policy, it doesn't address that at all. The, the, you know, quality and so forth. Am I correct? Like if somebody doesn't do a good job or... If they can meet the criteria, and there's references in, well, and again, I'm not, let's just talk general, I mean, whether it's the ceiling yeah. project, whether it's a picture project, whether whatever, there's criteria to be met, and, um, it, you know, take Rookie, for instance, we've worked with, you had several different companies who are Rookie, have they met the criteria, for the most part, yeah, I mean, could someone argue one of the companies, you know, they did a horrible job for me, Probably can all of us, you, you, you know, run into that piece. So, like with the roofing, we look at a making sure they're qualified, they have references, you, you know, and stuff, and then go to this. You know, some are local and some are not. So, that's what I'm asking. Let's say we have the roof done. Now, that's a longer term thing, but let's say in 10 years we have to do it again and we find out there were some things that probably weren't done the best, but, and, and that same person again applies. We take that into consideration. You now have a legal, you, you know what I say, a defendable reason to say no. And, and again, I, just like if we had a heating project and see things they go with. And I'm not saying you pick company A, so to speak. And we're doing second year of heating this year. You now have something that is defendable to say, you know what, the company wasn't going to work with it. Um, and we're taking the second goals or, um, it, you know, something like that. Uh, or, you know, maybe even the fact that we, we had this company last year, and we have a great working relationship, and we had no issues whatsoever. Yeah, they're small amount higher. Um, the other one we had trouble with five years ago, or whatever. You have a reason to not go with 
that company now that is you know justified? Okay, so I think as a school board, in my opinion, we have to be able to make some decisions um, other than just inside the box type decisions. For instance, um, I'm not going to use a certain case, I guess, but there's times I think where we'll if get the bid is pretty close, uh, you know, we should be able to make that decision if we, you know, we feel deep inside that there's a better option. You know, if, if it's close. If it's close, yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, well, putting a percentage on it is hard too because it depends on what work is being done. Absolutely. That's, that's what makes it hard. So the question is do we have any leeway in this? this a way of putting that in. Well, let me ask this then. Do you want to change the process? I mean, if it is not a process that truly has to be bid, then we just go out and find two companies or three companies. And, you know, well, I'm, I'm not saying I'm in favor. I'm just asking, though, and so that, you know, and again, then we, you know, only look at now if we can. If we can't get two bids in town, then you start going, oh, no, keep in mind. What does that possibly do to price? And, and, and is that the best process? I'm going to say, I don't believe so. And, and I'll give an example. I'm not going to use the name. I was talking to a person who wants to work on the airport. Okay, and you know, there's local contractors who have got work one year and not the second. And whether that's right or wrong, but it's based on their spending taxpayer dollars. And fortunate or unfortunate, you can win some, you lose some, so to speak, in the you know, bidding process. You know, and there's times that um, contractors have more work than they can do, so to speak, and so they'll put in maybe higher bids. They really don't have, you know, staff or can do the work, but they'll throw something in if they have to. You know, and so I guess that's the tough part of it. You, you know, on these projects we're talking about right here, um, a good chunk of them are local. You know, it was opened up to anyone. If the most part of anyone met the criteria, it, you know, and you felt were we looked at old, old price, and um, there are some locals that didn't get some. You know, there was the carpet bid, there were three bidders, two local, one not local. Um, I think for the most part, the, the carpet warranty and things like that were very comparable, and we went with lowest. I mean, someone could argue this person maybe isn't as good as the other local person, but so we took that. Can I, can I just make a... A suggestion that um, we contact MSBA to see if it's even legal for a setup before we go down that route of saying we're going to go with something local as a preference. Um, I, I'm not saying we can't go with something local, I'm saying that a policy about only going local might be illegal. So I, I well, no, the, the process would be as long as it's legally not at an amount that we yeah. have to bid, we can go all You're talking about local that threshold, it, you know, and a lot of these projects we could go out and get coals. And of course, then you're driving who you ask. And again, it doesn't mean you're going to get the lowest value, no. Um, obviously, if you drive things to keep it more quote unquote local, if that's the reason. So, I guess the main thing I'm saying is that there's something like one of the contracts that are coming up, I won't say. There is a quality factor mm -hmm. because of the. All right, well, let's discuss so the last specific one that you're going to be talking about when we get to rounds there. Can we talk about that? No. When when we we get talk, yeah, when we get there, you can talk all you want. <laughs> all right. Okay. So I have a motion by Jen and a second by Tony. Um, I'll call it to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution of acceptance of gifts or of gifts and donations. I need a motion to start. I'll make that motion. All seven. All right. Resolution of acceptance of gifts and donations. Whereas school board policy 706 establishes the guidelines for acceptance of gifts or donations to the district. Whereas the International Falls School District Board encourages the support of the district's educational programs through gifts or donations that meet the goals and objectives of the school district. Whereas Minnesota Statute 465.03 states 
the school board may accept a gift, grant, or device of real or personal property only by the adoption of the resolution approved by two-thirds of its members. Therefore, be it resolved, the School Board of International Falls Public School, IS3D 361, accepts the, with appreciation the following gifts, donations or grants received by the school district. District donations, PCA Mill of International Falls, Camp Invention, $1,750. Minnesota Youth Ski League, Nordic Ski Instructor Fee, $145. Mr. Pete Foundation, fifth grade class project, $226.60. PCA Mill of International Falls, weight room wellness, $2,500. Epic Threads, Sheila Field Scoreboard, $250. Coca-Cola of International Falls, Sheila Field Scoreboard, $500. Stewart Super One, Sheila Field Scoreboard, $500. Sammy's Pizza, Sheila Field Scoreboard, $250. Chocolate Moose, Sheila Field Scoreboard, $250. PCA Mill of International Falls, Two pallets of X9 copy paper. I have a motion by Terry and a second by Mike. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call it to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passed. Nobody voted no, so it's unanimous. Is that correct? We don't have to do a roll call. No, no, no. Okay. Same on the next one. Uh, everybody voted in favor, whereupon the resolution was declared adopted. Okay. Re uh, item number three resolution adopting post insurance debt compliance policy for tax exempt and tax advantaged governmental bonds. Adopting uh, post-insurance debt compliance policy for tax-exempt and tax-advantaged governmental bonds. Whereas the independent school district number 361, International Falls, Minnesota, from time to time will issue tax-exempt and tax-advantaged governmental bonds. And whereas under the Internal Revenue Code of 1986, as amended and related regulations, and Securities and Exchange Commission, the district is required to take certain actions after bond insurance to ensure that interest on those bonds remain in compliance with the code and SEC, SEC, and whereas the district has determined to adopt a policy regarding how district will carry out its compliance responsibilities via written procedures, and to that end has caused to be prepared documents titled post-insurance debt compliance <coughs> policy and post, I'm sorry, that was post-issuance, not insurance, post-issuance debt compliance policy and post-issuance debt compliance procedures. And whereas the school board of the district has reviewed the post-issuance debt compliance policy in connection with the post-issuance debt compliance policy procedures, and has determined that it is in the best interest of the district to adopt the policy. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the independent school district number 361, International Falls, Minnesota, the board approves the policy as shown in the form attached, and be it further resolved, the district staff is authorized to take all actions necessary to carry out the post-issuance debt compliance policy and post-issuance debt compliance procedures. Um, did I get a motion and a second on this one? So, okay. I'll Michelle second. and Rox. Any further discussion? And again, just so you're aware, this is given to us by fellows that um, manage uh, our bonds, so for the most part, um, you know, uh, number one on their recommendation here. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Voted unanimously, adopted by the Independent School District number 361, Minnesota, this 15th day of April 2019. Later, Item number four, 
Award the RFP for student school picture package to Life Touch for the 2019-2020 school year with the potential to renew contract up to four additional years. One last call. All right, at this point we'll entertain any motion. Well, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest with you. Um, what do you do if there's no motion made? I need direction then. It failed when we move on. If you want the process started over, you want a different process in place, we have to do something. All right, well, we got to discuss it. Can um, we talk about it? And then well, well, here's the thing. You can make a motion without... You can make a motion just to get a discussion. But we can't have a discussion about it without a motion, so... Okay. So moved. so moved, I have a motion by Michelle. Do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion. All right, motion by Michelle, second by me. Further discussion. Uh, Terry, I think you would like to start. Thank you, Chairman. You're hey, welcome. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm kind of struggling with this because of a number of reasons personally for my pictures from last year, which I'm not supposed to look at in person. But uh, I think the quality, at some point, we, it, when it's this type of thing, pictures of kids, we're not talking about a new roof, we're not talking about putting new carpet in. We're talking about something that's real personal. Personal to have good pictures for your kids when you, when you graduate, good pictures when they're going up through the grades. And at what point do we just take uh, the lowest bid on that, you know, and I, I was sick the last time or I, something was and I didn't vote and I wasn't going to vote for lowest bid like everybody else did. I'm not saying I would have voted any different last time. But I'm really struggling with that this year. Um, um, I don't know if the other people did a bad job or good job, you know, as far as how the pictures turned out. Um, but there were some other things that did bother me. Um, I, it's not that it's just local, even though I think it's great to have local. Um, but it's also, there's more to it. Like, I don't know what's donated. You know, I don't know what the people talk about donating. And I don't know what that all entailed. But uh, for me, I'm really struggling with this one, where I have no trouble with uh, big bids at all taking the lowest. But for some reason, this one, I, I would like to be able to make a decision also on quality and what that person also gives uh, picture-wise to wreck and everything else and all. And I don't know if I, I'm, I, I should be able to do that, I don't know. Uh, well said, Terry. Uh, I agree with that entirely. Yeah. Hold on uh, one second, Mike. Um, just to, to, I have a hard time moderating this, looking down this way and ignoring these people down here. Um, so let's do it in order of hand raising, because I know everybody has something to say. Rock had her hand up, and then you'll be up next time. Um, okay. So, is it possible that we could take just picture taking all of, all the other stuff and still make it legal and say pictures are the only thing that we will look at, not lowest bid? Can we do that, or is that not legal? I guess from my standpoint, I think you have to clarify your process and figure out what you want and how you want to determine. And have that set forefront, you know. So going into it, here are the criteria we're looking at, and here is how we're going to rank it. Whether it was four local bidders, whether it was one local bidder, whether it was local and oh, um, we need Was it too late to do that? Is it too late to do that? You can throw them all out right now. If the board doesn't want to accept any of them, you know that is an option, and you start the process over somehow. My piece that I'm struggling with, and again, it has nothing to do with, we have pictures of stages hanging in the house that are just fine. It's just we put an RFP with criteria in place. For the most part, they all met the criteria. If you want something, you, you know, for instance, to look at quality other than what's in the books, and I'll, I'll commend, um, I can't speak for all, I think four or five came to my office and actually looked through the books. So, I mean, you know, that is what we asked for, and that is what we 
you know, technically are making the decision based on If you want the process, we can have all three, four, whatever, come in and have, you know, like an interview process and have them show you, have them, you know, ask for references. I mean, there's ones that, you know, the other schools, there's ones that, you know, need a variety of things. The process can be what you want. Um, and again, if you want me just to go out and find two vendors or three vendors and come back to you, I can do that with some direction of what you want to be only mobile and I can only find one or two or three, but it's, you still have to have a process in place. What are we going to, you know, um, I, I gave a sheet here and, and this is no um, different than what we kind of do when we interview people or hire people. We put a sheet in place and put different criteria out and several people go through and grade, if you will, the person or hiring a staff member, you know, and then we sit down and who did I rank, say the top five and so on. And again, not that these points are, you know, right or wrong, it's just we're all using the same thing then. And so we did the same thing, you know, did they meet all the criteria, did the price, did we put different values. Um, maybe you don't agree with it, right, but we should set that out ahead of time. I mean, if price is the last thing you want considered, then we put a little point value on it. You know, you have some rubric, if you will, some way of measuring so that a recommendation can come forth if it's coming from administration or um, if you all want to be involved and, and Typically, it's not a process for, you know, it would be, but you all want to, you know, conduct interviews for school pictures and have an interview process, you can do that. You, you see what I'm getting at? And we just need the process in place before, um, I mean, to say before we get to this point, because, uh, again, can they all do school pictures? I would say the answer is yes. Okay, are they at the quality that you want? That is more of an opinion-based thing, but I mean, they all have recommendations, and they've all done school pictures. We did, as you're what, what I think aware, um, do a little more formal process. We got an RFP from a variety of schools and put them together so that it was more of a formal process. Again, we changed that to meet some local, meaning the majority of all of them had give us three schools that we worked with. That would not, I don't think, worked for a local person, so we just put, you know, give references, so to speak, or up to three references. So, um, you know, we did commit it, not trying to, whether it's Sage or anyone else will, you know, allow them the opportunity to bid, but the point being is you should have the process, if it's not going to be, if they meet, if they meet the criteria, the price, we should have a way out ahead of time. I'd like to see a new change in policy by the school board. When you've got, it's so close, a couple of dollars, you're down to a couple of dollars at all it is. And then, with a new policy that when you're that close, that you can look at other criteria, like how well Sage has done hers, or how well the others have done theirs, uh, being local, and look at the whole picture. I mean, you're talking just a few dollars, and that's my opinion. I think we need a policy that, that works on that. When you're that close, a couple of bucks, then you need to have more discussion. And you need to keep your money in town when it's that close. All right, Jeff. <clears throat> so I'm kind of new to this process, being a new member. Um, so, I, and I do understand that you have to have a clear policy and you have to follow it as routinely, you know, consistently. And I, I appreciate that. And I think like you said, Kevin, you know, if you have a policy, if you're not going at the lowest bid, you need to determine why you're going to do that. And it has to be defendable. And I think, in my opinion, from the information that I've gathered through looking through the bids, and in this case, it's a little bit different, in my opinion. Um, if there was a roofing job, and the experience then is how maybe Tom or the facilities management or the facilities committee experiences the people that are doing the work and the quality of their work, most of us won't know how that job was done because we're not really that front end user. But in this case, I feel like the front end user is the consumer that aren't just us, but it's the families that are choosing the, the pictures themselves. And they're putting their money forth for those pictures. So in this case, I think, again, if it was a roofing project and Tom had a terrible time with one company, but they keep coming in lower, and you decide, no, nope, I gotta be able to defend it, that it's not, we're not gonna go with that company. And, or this company was so much better, 
you know, it might, you have to, that's where the decision comes in is whether that, value, where you value that. And from looking at the letters of recommendation and looking at um, the, all the different bids and trying to listen to um, families, I feel like that has to be considered in this case when the price is so close. So in my opinion, they're part of this process. Their opinion matters because they're the consumers that are purchasing it. And I think there are plenty of people that were, we haven't surveyed everybody for one, that wasn't our process, but we didn't hear, I didn't personally hear, um, you know, please go with Life Fetch or please go with Interstate. They've been fabulous these last two years. And it's not just the end product, but it's the experience for the students. We heard, I heard and read, that the experience for the student was not as positive in terms of how long they had to wait in line, how well they were organized with that process. And I also feel like the experience, which also then is an experience for teachers and a disruption in the day at times, but also the experience in terms of making sure that the student, you're getting as true and as personalization, as personalized of a reception or um, picture of that child, you know, again, trying to get a reasonable smile. You can't get them always the best, but and trying to make it right if it's not. And so while I think they are fairly similar bids on paper, because what the extras that we get from the other couple of companies, Sage provides more in her, you know, I kind of see that as equal. She's here and contributing in other ways, and they might provide a lot of extras because they have resources that are differently. So. I thought about this a lot and I just, I feel like, I, I feel like I have to take local out in a way because you have to have something fair. Local in this instance is $2, but we can't always go local if it's going to be an extra $25,000 that the district has to pay. So I think it could be considered and it's valuable, but in my opinion, for me, it's, we have to consider the input we've received from consumers that are also putting their money forth by choice this. We're not making them choose it. I mean, we give them this option. They do have at least one other option in town, if not more. But um, um, the, being so close, that experience matters. Uh, I'm going to let Michelle speak since you've already spoken. I'm going to kind of echo a little bit of what Rock said, is that we need to have a fair and consistent process. And with all the discussion that I'm hearing, I don't know that I can recommend anything besides tossing them all out and starting over again. Because if we want to consider all of these other elements, at this point, after a decision has been made, it's not fair to the other companies. You're right about that. So I, I guess that's how I feel about it is where if we, if we want to bring all these other things in which are good points to be considered, then we need to start over. We can't go from this point because it wouldn't be fair or defendable in a legal case. Okay, um, I'll just speak really quick. I do I do agree with uh, Michelle on what she just said. Fairness is very important, that's why we have the RFP. And um, if, if I were to vote on it, I would vote on the low bid. However, I mean, we are going to vote on it in a second um, because we had a motion in a second. But I'm also in favor of redoing it, providing that there's no legal repercussions from the person who had the two to the other people that have met their um, the requirements that we suggested. So if, if there's met the, the Yeah that's what I'm, yeah that's what I'm saying. So in the RFP you have yeah, four right four I mean. all. Um, otherwise and again just going on what's been given to me is you can obviously have the recommendation but you need to have a defendable Okay, and, and from what I understand, be local. You can defend the quality somehow. Okay, it's like you know, all around. I'm not advising one way or the other. If, if we just want to keep it local, I was given that is not a defendable piece when we are making the decision, you know, um, to spend money, even though it's not our money, so to speak. It's our process, it's our pictures. We need to have the process better laid out than that. So, um, okay, so we make policy goal that says when a you know a certain percentage how close it is in dollars, that then we could look at 
we could set up a new policy of that. Let me ask you then, in this case, because we tried giving you some examples here, if mm -hmm. there were 300 in each package, Bob, you know, and tried, that was one of the comparison sheets, okay? And what it did you want to do, you know, assuming the person, the company, I should say, does a good job, the intention is to renew after a year, you know, it's not a guarantee, but as long as things go well, not go through this for three years, four years, you know, up to five years. If you play that number all, whether it's 200 packages of each or about 300, it varies in that range, as you saw, from 20 to, you know, 50 to $25,000 difference. You know, and again, that's not just your own, it's all five years put together, but it's trying to compare all three. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough, unless to me, unless you say the project is within 5%, again, I need to check it. I don't think, you know, when it comes to public dollars, if they meet criteria, you're supposed to go to the list unless, like you say, you had a bad experience. This is a little different deal on vault, and you better figure out a way to have an interview process and have them all bring in quality pictures or something. And, you know, and at least you have like an interview process where you can put some value to that because all three or four are going to be able to bring good pictures, I think, to you. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, but, um, so I don't know what that would get without doing, um, and again, I think if you check references, just like job references, most of the time you don't hear much other than good. Because if someone puts a reference on it, it's more going behind the scenes and trying to, you know, dig information out. All right, Roxanne. Oops, sorry. Um, one other, I'm, I'm not against changing the policy either and throwing out everything and starting again. That's perfectly fine, but I guess I'm not sure that anybody that's low income would want to come and defend the fact that they were low income. And I know a year or two ago we talked about people, we have a high number of students that are you know, low income and you know I don't know that they get their fair shake. So if we were going to do it, I think we'd always have to maybe every year look at the price because if other companies are bringing a much lower price we're still going with local and it's higher then is that fair to the people that we just talked about at this table a year or two ago to say we were always going with low bid. So I just I'm fine throwing it out but I think we gotta you know do it the right way. No, it seems like perhaps that this warrants its own work session when we're done with this at this point, after we call it to a vote. Um, no, I guess that... Well, I can amend my motion to... Um, it's going to be a tough one to amend. Table. <laughs> uh, I guess I would like to make a motion I mean, we to can all refuse down, all bids and go back to the drawing table. Well, let's vote on, I don't know if that's an appropriate use of an amendment. <laughs> I don't know either. So let's vote on this one, and then somebody can make a motion afterwards. What's that? Well, I was asking them if we're under any time limits on these pictures. Not for the most part. Obviously, if you select a group you know, that does school picture, you know, large number of dates are going to fill up, but there's nothing to say that you know, we've been fortunate to delegate into the first week or thereabouts, but nothing that's passed. Obviously, the longer we go, select someone, their dates can fill up or, or things like that. Um, other than that, no, you're not under. Um, I guess my, my recommendation would be to vote on, I, I think, vote and either vote it down and go back, give me direction to go back to the drawing board. But at least, I, I think that's my thought on it, if that's the desire. Whatever we think that we need to be crystal, crystal clear on what we want, apparently, including the preference of local if, if it's legal. Okay, any further discussion? I've got a motion by Michelle and a second by myself, and I'm going to reread this just for clarity purposes. Award the RFP for student school picture package to Life Touch for the 2019 2020 school year with potential to renew contract up to four additional years. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed? Hi, no aye. 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 Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it is voted down unanimously. So, would anybody like to make a second motion about a work session or anything like that? 
Can I just make a second motion to award the RFP for student school picture package to Sage Lee's photography for the 2019-2020 school year? You sure can. I'll second that. Hold on one sec. Um, okay, well, we got to open it back up for discussion. You had something to say? Well, I guess I just didn't know that that's how we could do it. I thought we were going to, we had to outline. No, if a board member makes a motion at the, um, during this session, I just feel like they can say, I've gotten enough information a from the people that are buying these pictures, and I know what they're wanting. Why go against what they're going to be paying for anyways? And the only piece I'm going to give, if you did, and you and I had a conversation on today, we will defend it. And I don't know what the new stands are, all of it. And what you can, because all you have really is, I guess, this conversation and, you know, what you've seen. Yeah. So I just want to be clear. You, you're going on, from my standpoint, an uncharted block today. Correct, is what's the dollar amount for the extended up to five year, four year? Did you say there was a huge difference? Well, it just depends on the one sheet, you know, that we put together and it's attached. We we chose just random numbers like 300 a package, 80, 300 a package B. Um, I can dig in my other sheet that I have here. You know, to try getting you know a value. And, and again, we don't have a basis to say there's 300 a package A bought every year. But it was trying to compare. It, you know, the, the was it comparing in year four? What's that? Well, year four or five, yeah. Because okay. some had zero increase across the board, some had you know, zero one year, no other increase year two, you know, that type of uh, scenario. And I have it here just give me a second. Um, so, for, for the example, um, Yeah, um, the, the one that was amended today with the sales tax put in. Um, again, just taking package one, two, and three for all all companies, saying 300 package one, 325, or two, and 325, and three. Total 950 pictures out of 1,070, because from what we've been told, the majority of families, you know, purchase some in the package. Um, and then we compare it. In that case, we took all four companies and rolled them out for those same numbers for the five years. Comes out to 99,400 for Life Touch, 108,675 for Interstate, $1,117, dollars sorry, 117,150 for Sage, and 118,125 for for the company Strong. Um, you know, so so it's how much difference the from, from the lowest to the highest from the lowest to the highest about 18,000. Over five years. Well, you know, in year one, again, year one, one of light touch is not the cheapest with sales tax. Uh -huh. you know, I can understand it's for a year or so. Then their increases, you know, start going up and, and well, potentially go up. It's been a caveat in there. You know, things change. Well, we have to assume things are going to change because, you know, in that, it's going to put their 10% or whatever. Or so, okay. Before I let uh, Terry talk, I was just going to say one more thing. Um, I, I will. I. I am. I think that this does not. I think a work session ends up being better than this. What we're doing right now, because there has been no precedent set by the school board to go local as a preference, and there has been in the RFP itself. There was no guidelines about accepting local. So personally, I would be voting no. But it will be in favor of it, if it doesn't, if it fails, I'll be um, making a motion for a work session. Terry, okay. that's what I was going to more or less say is um, I'd be, if I'm, everything being fine, I know why I vote right now. But because of the concerns of our superintendent, which makes sense, and our chairman, um, and we're not in a big hurry to make this decision, we don't have to make it today, I think to cover our bases. Uh, I think it would be best for us to go into a work session, come up with a policy that uh, nothing else protects us about making a decision in this case. Yeah, I could go along with that. Okay. Any further discussion down there? I, I agree with reviewing okay. before we make a decision. 
Any further discussion? All right, I'm going to read the motion as presented. Award the RFP for student school picture package to Sedgley Photography for the 2019-2020 school year with potential to renew contract up to four additional years. Is that correct, Tony, on what you meant? Yes. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. 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 That is voted down three to four. You need that noted who voted which way? Kevin? Okay. So you good? You know which way everybody voted for the? No. Okay. okay. Phil, three to four. Okay, Phil, go three to four. All right. Um, then. Uh, I make a motion okay. for a work session. There you go. <laughs> I'll second that. I've got a motion by Michelle and a second by Mike for a work session. I've got a lot of notes here. Any further discussion? Are you going to pick a date here, or yeah. again, the work session would be to a, I guess, I assume here, get information from our attorney legally, what yep. is the right, mm -hmm. um, and then come and at least throw off to that. You can't make a decision at you know the work session. You can direct me to do things. I can start. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> I can start the ball rolling, you know, and get the process yeah. going. But we can't at a work session pick a photography company. Is I guess what. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I think a work session would be good. I think Terry's ideas. Okay. So does someone have an idea? Do you have a specific date you're looking at, Michelle? Uh, how about Wednesday the 24th? Wednesday the 24th? Okay. No, Tuesday the 23rd? Thursday the 25th? 23rd is better. Some traffic for me. What the, well, it depends on what time. If I have a meeting till 7, 5 to 7. I can't meet on the 23rd. You can't meet on the 23rd. I got a traffic meeting. I got 22nd. Is that Monday? Next Monday work? It's early. Sure. Yeah, I can go on. It says, it, <laughs> it says it's Easter it's Monday. Easter Monday. Oh, that's Easter. Is that a holiday? Well, we actually do that. Okay, let's do that. How many people are going to travel on that? I'll be here. <coughs> All right. Easter, Easter Monday, here. the 22nd? Okay. So what's the date? Five or five. What are we talking about? Um, five o'clock. Monday. We're letting Michelle decide here really quick. Can anybody do four? Is that fun? Is that too early? I love daytime stuff. I get out of work for it. Two o'clock? Yeah. Happy hours at two. Four? Four? Okay, so we can try. I can try. The twenty second. Is this open to the public? Or work sessions. Guys? Work sessions are open to the public, but they but the public cannot talk at the work session at five o'clock. The other twenty second. Unless spoken to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry, my, my mistake. If Thanks four doesn't work, can five work for you guys? Five will work. If I can make four go, I will. But if not, can we do five? Michelle, you were the one on four. Set five then. I don't care. Five? Well, I can Five. I, I can try to make four. I just need to. I can't commit to it. Yet. All right. So we have a motion for a work session to discuss the bidding procedure uh, for school pictures, and I'm assuming other all bids I would think will will be discussed at that point. Correct. On 5 p.m. on April 22nd. Yeah. Um, I have a motion by Michelle and a second by. I don't remember. Mike. 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 All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This one carries unanimously. All right. All right. Action item number five. Approve memorandum of understanding with regards to seniority with local 331. Made a motion. Second. I got a motion by Michelle and a second by Tony. Any further discussion? Sorry, I'm writing a question. Sure. Just so you're aware, um, we, if you recall last contract, we changed the seniority of the way it's being calculated. And again, the intent was, for the most part, not to harm, um, adversely harm some people that it is. 
is. And, and so what came about, and again, that I guess happens over time, is some people that were taking unpaid leave. Now, they can take the leave by FMLA. Um, an example, I'm just throwing it out, say I had a heart surgery, okay? I only have, and I'm just using rough random numbers, 50 days of sick leave, and maybe I need 60 days, 12, 12 weeks off. I have 10 days of unpaid leave in there. Legally, my job gets held for me, I come back to work. Well, the, the language we use, your FTE for that year then goes down, you're no longer 1.0. And so they were losing seniority and some people were dropping because of things covered by FMLA. I don't believe that was the intent. Now, if a person takes you know, more time off than FMLA covers and the board approves, you did that um, for a person that was out on leave and they wanted to extend to Christmas. Different story. They're over the 12 weeks, the union agrees, that's their choice. If they drop, they drop. And so all this language, of course, we're going to have to get it into the contract come negotiation is to hold, for the most part, that intention right now. And I think that was the intent, or at least that's my understanding. It really affects no one this year because we are not, you know, reducing and no one's getting let go, so to, pay, so to speak. So we have time, but we legally have to put a seniority in this out, so I need to get this straightened out. And so, again, the union has approved it, and now I'm asking the board to Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call it to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. Moving on to administrative reports. Melissa Tate, elementary principal. Uh, our enrollments at 521. We're up two kids from uh, last month. And then we also will have a new student starting tomorrow in second grade, but that is not included on this enrollment number. So it will go up to 522. Um, we are currently doing MCA testing for grades three through five in reading, math, and science, and they're going well. Um, we are, our spring concerts are coming on May 3rd, and that's for K through fourth grade. And we are busy getting ready for our Bronco Pride Carnival that will be coming on May 30th. So the kids are getting ready for that, getting excited. Okay, things are going well. Tim Anderson, secondary principal. Our enrollment is at 547, and we're down one from last month. And we also are conducting MCA testing, and we'll conclude our testing with the 10th grade science on May 3rd. We have our spring sports week the week of May 13th to the 17th, and we'll have our pep fest then Wednesday, May 15th. The Elks Green of the Month banquet is Sunday, April 28th at the Elks at 5 p.m., beginning at 5 p.m. This year, the seniors voted to have a senior group photo taken in lieu of having the graduation photo where they're shaking hands with a board member. They have the option of wearing their cap and gown and we're going to go into the gym. They'll have their picture taken in the bleachers as a, a class and then they will have their individual photo taken in kind of the uh, vignette, proper terminology to put it in there next to the uh, group photo. And it was pretty much overwhelmingly voted in by the seniors, so we're going to try that this year. We have a tentative date set up for May 1st. We're going to try to do it before we get to uh, finals and that kind of thing because we want as good of attendance as possible. Kevin and I looked at some dates. Right now that date looks open. We don't have any sports out of town, so we're going to shoot for that May 1st. Uh, our next aftercare meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 16th at 2.15 at Bacchus. And uh, I didn't make it to the last meeting, but it looks like things are going to be starting in August at Rainier River Recovery, so just kind of follow up. It does sound like Little Fork is going to send someone to attend. I haven't heard back from Jim, so did reach out to their school. That's all I have. Thank you. Kevin Grover, Superintendent. Um, if you want to jot a date, as Ms. Reverson just mentioned, I'm going to throw one in a little further out. May 30th, um, the Elks has done this, this student breakfast for, I don't know, many years for seniors. Um, it would be another one. It's 8.30 to, you know, roughly 9 or so. Um, I would say board members would be more than um, invited to come. Again, even if there's more of you that attend than leave, it's just like going to a graduation, I would say, if you don't sit together. You know, you know and you can wish the students the best. Um, I was going to mention that, um, again, whether you're in favor or not, um, 
there's there's many options. We haven't done the grip and grin forever. But that's kind of what the photographers call it. And so um, the company throughout at Mailer Paper, they would come do that. Or more schools are doing what they call a collage, where you get your individual and either scatter them about so you have a picture of everyone in your graduating class, you know, or doing like this group chose a class picture all in their gowns, um, and we'll do it in the gym, and then their individual picture. Um, that's what they chose. So um, fortunate or unfortunate. You're off the hook for that piece this year. So graduation. Uh, no, you st we still are going to want. We're going to still want the board members up, and yeah. it, but you just won't. You'll hand out diplomas. Yeah. You're just not going to have a picture taken. Oh, okay. Um, good, bad, or indifferent. Obviously, you can have pictures taken with memorable people or you know that type deal. Um, so that's out there. Uh, just a heads up that the scheduling is coming together. There are. Um, Tim, Missy, myself um, have worked together. But things are, for the most part, getting finalized of where I can say probably 98% confident where everyone is going to be. Some people have been notified. Um, you'll hear some things, and um, like I say, it, the decisions are what they are. Some people have volunteered to move buildings and things like that, and some are going to move maybe not based on volunteering. It's a staffing piece of it. Um, we are, um, if you recall, we reduced and we're piecing a position together um, and filling it. We're not completely set yet on what we're going to need or if we're going to need. One of the pieces being, we have to keep in mind our title, like this year, we increased a person to full time because we ended up getting additional title money. And so we're a little hesitant on, you know, continue. Um, the one piece I can tell you, um, and again, it's, it's hats off to some employees and take this as you will. Um, our free and reduced rate is on the rise. And I'm not saying that's a good thing, it's, it's a reality, okay? Um, the, the, across the district, we are about 85 students from back in September that have qualified for free and reduced. We have not had 85 students come in. It, it's a matter of, and I'm going to, um, and again, it could be more people than this, but Carla as food director has posted many times and worked with families. Michelle in the business office has worked with numerous families to get the paperwork filled out. Um, and we can get, you know, pushed it where we can. We pushed it for several years, but um, that's a big increase, okay? Um, we're slightly over 50% at the elementary. High school is obviously a bunch lower. It averages out to 42.2%. That number drives a lot of things, if you recall, not just free to reduce lunch and activities. It drives title funding to a certain extent. So again, unless there's a major cut at the federal level with our number going up, we're probably going to be in similar spots. So Missy just actually sent me an email before this afternoon and we, we will talk on, but there is a part-time position that we're sitting out there with and we're not quite sure that I, want, I don't have a recommendation for you, but at some point we will possibly for that elementary part-time position, or we may wait until we go forward. Yeah. But, um, and again, part-time position, not necessarily easy to find. We have a, I'm say, a decent chance at the elementary, you know, level. Part-time title? Well, it would be title or could be used a variety of different, but yeah, that's mainly what we're looking at right now, is, which means you need an elementary license. Um, and again, uh, on, and I did write the down. A few weeks back, there was the joint meeting between the, the city council, rec commission, and school board that was called by the city. Several of you were in attendance, and I guess I just want to, at least in, in those that were, if you want to chime in here. I thought the meeting went just fine. It mainly, in my mind, was kind of a brainstorm session of things that are going well, things you'd like to see, um, and um, got input, got some feelings. The city is asking for another session, okay, to bring the school board rec commission um, together, and they've thrown out the date of April 29th at 6:30. Um, city chambers. Um, again, I don't know exactly the direction or what's going to be discussed, where it's going to go. I know rec commission meets this week, and um, I've been told they're going to, you know, chat some. But I think it's long-term looking. Um, again, no decision is going to be made, you, you know, at that meeting. 
um, I throw it out, we will post it, um, unless the mass of you tell me you can't, you know, no one can go, if that's the case, we need to look at another date. I don't think it's something everyone has to be at. It's only everyone can. If we can get two, three members or more, I would say we respond and it's good. I mean, if one can only make it, I mean, I, I can make it, but I mean, only one, and then I'd say let's look for a different date. So I guess that's what I'm asking here. Twenty-nine. I can be there. Right there. I can be there. Okay. And again, Terry's going to be there. I'm going to be there. Okay. Okay. And there's a couple more. And again, everyone can. You know, we're going to post it again. It'll be a, in essence, a work session. So, anyone else have any comments from the meeting? I mean, uh, I thought that the meeting went. You know, I had no clue what to expect. I think most people didn't, and it was very uh, civil and constructive and it was managed very well and it could have been a lot worse and everybody was very happy to participate in the discussion so it went pretty well and the last thing i have is um there's there is a need to get our technology committee at least back on the ground if you will back established um, and i guess my thought is to ask for some volunteers elementary high school Administration, as well as some school board members, to start having a conversation or continue having a conversation, get a conversation started again on hardware needs, software needs, instructional needs, use of technology, and see who's willing to come to the table and start a conversation. What's working, what maybe isn't working. And so I guess I'm asking um, if there's any volunteers. I don't have a date set. I would like to look at the May and at least get a conversation going here. Um, and again, obviously the tech people have to be involved as well. But looking for someone that, or a person or team that that's an interest, I guess technically, and yeah, to asking three. to make a committee, so to speak, ad hoc committee. Um, and I think Ted, Ted and I talked about this. I mean, we could appoint, so to speak, but obviously we look at someone that has a passion and would like to, yeah. you know. So Jen's expressed interest and I've expressed interest, but I don't know how anybody else, if anybody else wants to be, is interested in being on that. Do you have any background in that? Hmm? <laughs> any background in that? Just winging it. <laughs> anybody else interested in it at least? I'd be interested if you need it. Or on something. Well, we don't necessarily, I mean, we two people is enough, but I mean, three, it, yeah, we can have up to three, so. Yeah, I would be. Okay. okay. Perfect. That's all I have. All right, uh, Ella Bar Jeffries, a student representative. Well, today we did an Easter egg hunt for one of the classes at the elementary school, and tomorrow we're going to do another one. We had a lot of fun with that. Our April projects that are underway include on the 25th, we're doing another blood drive. On April 27th, we're hoping to do an adoption day at the Humane Society. We are planning a walk for water in May. We have more details to come on that one. Pennies for Patients will be May 6th through the 10th. Spring Sports Week is being planned, and we also have a car wash planned for Saturday, May 18th. And also, our page on the school website has been updated, so you can go check that out, too. I'd just like to add, I've been loving seeing all the high school students on Facebook going over to the elementary. My son came home with the stuffed animal the other day because some of the older kids were reading to him, and it was like the best thing ever. I mean, it looked like it was sewn in one minute, but it was like the best thing ever to him. And so my, my kids that are over there have really been enjoying that. So good job on stuff like that. All right. Um, is, is that all you have then? Yes. All right. Committee reports. Community Ed Advisory Board. We still haven't had a meeting. It's May. It's quarterly. May? Oh. Yeah. Um, okay. Should that be on there every time, just so we remember it then? Or should we take it off when it's not applicable? Okay. Well, we'll figure that out next time, right? Okay. Recreation Commission, have you guys met since we've met? Uh, we uh, meet on Wednesday. Okay. So we'll have some stuff to report next time. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no further commi uh, committees. I guess I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I got a motion by Rox and a second by Michelle. Yep. Okay. At, I've got 6.30. This program is brought to you by the Kuchichang Area Prevention and Education Coalition. 
CAPE exists to reduce youth and young adult alcohol and other drug use by promoting safe and healthy choices among all community members. Thank you.